Good morning, and welcome to St. John's on the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. I'm the Reverend Gia Hayes-Martin, the Rector of St. John's. A special welcome to anyone who is a guest of St. John's this morning. We're glad you're here, and we hope you find something in this community that feeds your soul. We hold a coffee hour over Zoom after our service. Instructions for joining are emailed out on Saturdays. If you'd like to be on the parish email list, please fill out the form on the Contact Us section of our website, stjohnsworthington.org. And members of St. John's, if you've invited a friend to join us for worship, please share the coffee hour information with them too. Our service this morning is morning prayer from the Book of Common Prayer of the Episcopal Church. The order of service was emailed out on Saturday morning. The link is in the weekly announcement sheet, and you'll find the link to the virtual coffee hour there too. Your part of our service will also be on the screen, so everyone can participate even without an order of service. Now let us enter into a brief moment of silence as we prepare to worship God. Thus says the High and Lofty One who inhabits eternity, whose name is Holy, I dwell in the high and holy place, and also with the one who has a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, Father, and and to the the Son, and and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as as it was in the beginning, beginning, is now, and and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. We continue with the Jubilate. Be joyful in in the the Lord, Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know Know this, the Lord Lord himself himself is God. God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. 
Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Proclaim your faithfulness, for I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know the festal shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. They rejoice daily in your name. They are jubilant in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength and by your favor our might is exalted. Truly the Lord is our ruler, the Holy One of Israel is our King. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. In that same year, at the beginning of the reign of King Zedekiah of Judah, in the fifth month of the fourth year, the prophet Hananiah, son of Azur, from Gibeon, spoke to me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priest and all the people, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two years I will bring back to this place all the vessels of the Lord's house, which King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon took away from this place and carried to Babylon. I will also bring back to this place King Jeconiah, son of Jehoiakim of Judah, and all of the exiles of Judah who went to Babylon, says the Lord, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priest and all of the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen, the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in, in the hearing of all people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As the prophet who prophesies peace when the word of the prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. Then the prophet Hananiah took the yoke of the prophet Jeremiah and broke it. And Hananiah spoke in the presence of all the people, saying, Thus says the Lord, This is how I will break the yoke of the king Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon from the neck of all nations within two years. At this, the prophet Jeremiah went his way. Sometime after the prophet Hananiah had spoke the yoke of the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Go tell Hananiah, thus says the Lord, you have broken wooden bars only to forge iron, iron bars in place of them. 
Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I will put, put an iron yoke on the neck of all the nations so that they may serve King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, and they shall indeed serve him, and I have given him the, the wild animals. And the prophet Jeremiah said to the prophet Hananiah, Listen, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you and made you this people trust in a lie. Therefore, says the Lord, I am going to send you off the face of the earth. Within this year, you will be dead because you have spoken rebellion against the Lord. In that same year, in the seventh month, the prophet Hananiah died. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. reading from Matthew. Jesus said, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive the prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person, will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Oh, oh, oh. 
It's so easy to condemn him and so difficult to understand and even empathize with him. The prophet Jeremiah is one of my favorite figures in the Bible. You might have guessed that from last week's sermon. So I'm naturally inclined to take Jeremiah's side in this dispute between prophets. Hananiah is a flunky of the king, a liar, a false prophet who was not sent by God. Then I read an essay on him by Charles L. Aaron Jr., who pointed out, Hey, preachers, have you ever softened your words to please a congregation? Have you ever held back what you believed was the truth to avoid someone's anger? I had to be honest and admit, yeah, I've done those things. Aaron went on, then you can't judge Hananiah so quickly. I was taken aback by that. Maybe I've got Hananiah wrong. He had a difficult job in an impossible situation. And maybe his story can be God's word to us as we face our own challenging situations. The time is about 600 years before the birth of Jesus. Israel had once been a strong, united kingdom under David, its greatest ruler. But that was centuries ago. David's kingdom has split into two, Israel in the north and Judah in the south. Israel has been conquered by the Assyrian Empire, which was itself swallowed up by the Babylonian Empire soon after. Judah still holds on as an independent kingdom, but Babylon is engaged in a slow-motion conquest. Babylon is huge and wealthy compared to Judah, with a much bigger, stronger army. The Babylonians have already seized the treasures from Judah's temple in Jerusalem. Judah's king, Jeconiah, his immediate family, and many of Judah's leaders have surrendered to Babylon and gone into voluntary exile. Jeconiah's uncle, Zedekiah, is now king of Judah. He has a couple of options. He can accept Babylonian domination and become a vassal state, or he can resist and fight for Judah's independence. Zedekiah does what kings of Israel and Judah do when they face life or death decisions for their kingdom. They consult prophets to hear the word of God. Jeremiah is a prophet called by God, but not an official court prophet. He has a reputation in Jerusalem as a pain in the neck, gloomy, pessimistic, always going on about violence and destruction. He's known for symbolic acts. Jeremiah has made a wooden yoke, the kind of thing you put on your oxen to pull a plow, and he's been wearing this yoke around Jerusalem. He says this yoke represents the yoke of Babylon. And Jeremiah says, God says that any nation that accepts Babylon's yoke will stay in its own land. But any nation that throws off the yoke of Babylon will be destroyed and its people exiled. Jeremiah says this to Judah's allies, then to King Zedekiah, then to the priests and people. We can picture them all gathered in the temple, the house of God, listening to Jeremiah. He has some freedom to speak. He's an outsider. He knows no one at court is going to listen to him, so he might as well let them have it. The priests and people listen to gloomy old Jeremiah, then they turn to Hananiah. Hananiah is an official court prophet, called by God and also by the king. Hananiah's ability to speak God's word to the king depends on his relationship with Zedekiah. The court prophet has the king's ear, but say too many things the king doesn't want to hear, and a court prophet is out of a job. Hananiah says he hears a different word from God, that God will break the yoke of Babylon. Two more years, and all the treasures of the temple will return, with King Jeconiah and all the exiles. Jeremiah, who's still wearing the wooden yoke, is never one to pass up an opportunity to argue. He says, Amen. May it be so. May God bring the temple treasures and the exiles back home. 
we don't have a sense of the tone he uses here, whether he is sarcastic or sincere. Maybe Jeremiah would love for Hananiah's words to be fulfilled. But Jeremiah doesn't see that happening. He points out that many prophets before them have foreseen war, famine, and pestilence. He doesn't need to add, and they were right. If a prophecy of peace comes true, only then will Judah know that God has truly sent that prophet. Hananiah responds by lifting the yoke off Jeremiah's neck and smashing it. He reiterates his words, two more years, and God will break the yoke of Babylon, just like this. Jeremiah senses this is as far as he's going to get today, so he leaves the temple. Let's pause here for a moment. At this point in the story, how do we know which prophet speaks the truth? Which is the faithful response to the threat from Babylon, acceptance or resistance? We don't know. Both acceptance and resistance can be faithful responses. As Jeremiah points out, the outcome will tell you which was the right choice. We know that Jeremiah was the true prophet and Hananiah the false one only because we know how the story unfolds. The temple treasures and the exiles did not come home in two years. King Zedekiah stopped paying tribute to Babylon. He chose to resist. Babylon retaliated by attacking Judah. The Babylonians captured and burned Jerusalem, destroyed the temple, and took Zedekiah and the rest of Judah's leadership into exile. Judah ended up wearing the iron yoke of Babylon. As I have sat with Hananiah this week, the word from God I have heard is about decision-making how you discern a path forward when both options may be faithful choices. The words I've heard are humility, charity, and prayer. We may be wrong. We may prophesy peace, but we won't know that we speak the truth until there is peace. So we are humble as we discern. Because we may be wrong, we approach disagreements with charity. Much as I love Jeremiah, He is not the model for this. We acknowledge that those with whom we disagree may be right. They too are trying to be faithful. And our generosity of heart lets us love one another when we are not of one mind. And we pray. We do our research, we use the minds God has given us, and we take our multiple faithful options to prayer. We ask others to pray for us as we decide. And then, With fear and trembling, we make our decision. We are wrapping up the survey about worship at St. John's moving forward as the pandemic rolls on. I know you have been waiting to hear about this. The survey has taken much longer than we expected. The results so far indicate that we are not of one mind about returning to in-person worship. I would be shocked if we were. About half the respondents have said they will not return to in-person worship until there is a vaccine for COVID-19. They personally are at high risk, or they need to be in close contact with someone at high risk, or church with young children is not feasible until we're able to resume children's church. Other respondents, a smaller number, are ready to return to in-person worship right now. Both options, continuing exclusively online or resuming in person, with services online for those who can't attend, both of these options can be faithful choices. Both options have risks. Some of our friends in Christ in other churches have chosen one path, some the other. At St. John's, the wardens, music director, chair of the worship committee, and I will make our decision in the next couple of days. Look for a communication from me this week. Jeremiah might have been wrong, Hananiah might have been right. Only the outcome shows which one was the true prophet. And if I'm being honest, we might be wrong too. The worship decision-making team has read the guidelines from our diocese and from public health experts. We are listening to your input. We are praying about this. We are striving to make the right decision for St. John's. And it's possible that we might turn out like Hananiah. 
Some of you will agree with our decision about worship, and some of you won't. Wherever we find ourselves, we treat each other with charity and a generosity of heart that lets us love one another despite our disagreements. Because this is the work God has given us to do, to love God and love our neighbors, to reshape this hurting world into a place of justice and equality. And we approach that work the same way we make decisions, with humility, charity, and prayer. Let us affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Our Father Father in in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and and uphold them them now and and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise praise your your name forever. forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have Have mercy mercy on us, us, Lord. Have have mercy. mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put put our trust trust in in you. And you, Lord, is our hope, and we We shall shall never never hope hope in in vain. We continue with the collects. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off, and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
us pray for the church and for the world. God of love, we pray for your church. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Thomas, Ken, and Nettie, our bishops, for all lay and ordained ministers, and for all who seek you in the community of the faithful. Equip us with compassion and love to carry out your work of reconciliation in the world. God of love, hear our prayers for the church. God of freedom, we pray for our nation and all the nations of the world, for peace and unity across barriers of language, color, and creed, for elected and appointed leaders, that they would serve the common good. Inspire all people with courage to speak out against hatred, to actively resist evil. Unite the human family in bonds of love. God of freedom, hear our prayers for the world. God of justice, we pray for the earth, your creation entrusted to our care, for the animals and birds, the mountains and oceans, and all parts of your creation that have no voice of their own. Stir up in us a thirst for justice that protects the earth and all its resources, that we may leave to our children's children the legacy of beauty and abundance that you have given us. God of justice, hear our prayers for the earth. God of peace, we pray for this community, for our local leaders, for our schools and markets, for our neighborhoods and workplaces. Kindle in every heart a desire for equality, respect, and opportunity for all. Give us courage to strive for justice and peace among all people, beginning here at home. God of peace, hear our prayers for this community. God of mercy, we pray for all in any kind of need or trouble, for those whose lives are closely linked with ours and those connected to us as part of the human family, for refugees and prisoners, for the sick and suffering, the lonely and despairing, for those facing violence, for all held down by prejudice or injustice. Awaken in us compassion and humility of spirit as we seek and serve Christ in all persons. God of mercy, hear our prayers for all who are in need. Especially we pray for Eve, Phil and Elaine, Alicia, Ed and Joe, David, Nicholas, a family, Tom, Doug and family, Margaret, Andy, John, Julius, and those you may wish to add. for our servicemen and women, for all first responders, and for all healthcare workers. For all those affected by the coronavirus pandemic here and throughout the world. For those who are unemployed or underemployed. for all who experience fear or exclusion. For those in prison or bondage, in body or spirit. God of grace, we pray for those who have died, for the faithful in every generation who have worked for justice, for prophets who called us to racial reconciliation, for martyrs who died because of hatred, and for all the communion of saints. Make us faithful to your call to proclaim your good news by word and example, and bring us at last into the glorious company of the saints in light. God of grace, hear our prayers for those who have died. We remember especially Dr. James R. Cox and James Douglas Black.
O God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love. And work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth. That in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We give thanks for all the blessings of this life, especially for the people of St. John's and for their ministries. We give thanks for those celebrating birthdays this week. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor as we pray on her servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in their goodness all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us gather all our prayers into the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Good morning again. A couple of announcements to highlight this week. Coffee and Conversation this morning dives into the hymnal 1982. Stephen Sollers will share some ways we can use the hymnal for our own study and prayer. You'll be invited to share stories of your favorite hymns, and we'll try singing some of our favorites together. You can even mute yourself to sing along if you're self-conscious about the sound of your voice. We'll gather at 11.15 this morning using the same Zoom link we use for coffee hour. Tomorrow night is the last session of Vacation Bible School, which traditionally concludes with an outing to graders in Old Worthington for ice cream. Although VBS has been online this year, we would like to keep up this tradition. Children and their parents are invited to stop by graders today or tomorrow and pick up some ice cream to eat at home tomorrow night during the last VBS session. And if you feel comfortable going out, I invite you to get some graders and join me on the Village Green in front of St. John's tomorrow night between about 7.30 and 8 o'clock. There's plenty of space for us to spread out on the green. Please wear a mask when you're not actively eating your ice cream, and I hope to see you there. I also want to commend the VBS team for their creativity, resourcefulness, good humor, and hard work on this year's ministry. Once the team realized that VBS could not be held in person this year, they adapted the entire thing to an online context in only a few weeks. They have shown all of us how it can be done. So to Mary Bailey, Amy Beebe, Alice Carroll, Lisa Groutman, Lewis Huffman, Melissa Christopherson Redmill, Christy Reel, Stephanie Stevens, and Acting Director of Children and Youth Formation, Carrie Troster, St. John's is proud of you and well done. There's much more going on at St. John's. Please read the announcements that were emailed out yesterday. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Oh,
Jesus.